What is going on, Rebels? We are back showing you one of the most powerful liquidity indicators in the market. Uh, this is Mob Charts. So these are currently free as a no charge. There will be a link in the description below. Uh, I believe at some point in the future here, as they've advanced through their testing phases, there will probably be a monthly subscription on this. But as of right now, this is the most powerful free tool on the market for crypto trading. Uh, taking a peek here at the website, we are just mobchart.com. And uh, you can try now for free, right? I'll put a link below in the description, and I'll also pin one in the comment, uh, first comment as well for you to get yourself set up with some mob charts. But taking a look at what these guys do, they're essentially you're analyzing liquidity and order flow uh, in the cryptocurrency markets. Uh, they're using some kind of formalized data uh, from various exchanges. Uh, actually, they got Binance Spot and Futures, which is very huge. And this is not just a Bitcoin only tool you can use this on many 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 cryptos you can see a full list of a lot of them right here so you have binance spot you've got bybit you got binance futures and you got bybit futures so some of the most powerful liquidity exchanges in the world right now a lot of people use either the bybit futures chart or the binance futures chart as their leading indicator moving and navigating through the crypto charts but let's take a peek uh, at what this offers so here we have <clears throat> over on mob charts create edit or delete your workspaces so if you are familiar with exo charts uh, which we have covered in the past uh, it works a lot like exo charts where you can set up individual work spots or workspaces and um build out individual coins and tokens you want to do there and just flip around through workspaces or different tabs of workspaces. Uh, I do believe this is a Russian company. They have Russian and English, uh, but there are two types of workspaces. The default is designed for quick view of any needed situations, widgets, and their changes are not saved. And then you can create a new workspace to save your setup. Okay. Uh, lots and lots of widgets here. Uh, this is just a quick infograph here. They are showing you some of the delta on each individual candles which is pretty cool. Over here, you can see a live order book, the amount of Bitcoin sitting at that level, and a... Sorry, he's dragging things around on us here. So this is actually just organizing the chaos here a little bit, so you can get all kinds of different things going on here. So he's got a Delta candle set up over here, and then a liquidity map over here as well, uh, without the Delta setup. He's just trying to guess some divergences on different things. Uh, and then we got the uh, chart widgets themselves. You can get all kinds of things from the RSI, uh, the price books. You can do um, uh, many of the different indicator tools, which I'll actually walk you through them. And uh, let's see here. So chart widget, order book widget. So here's the live order book for the feed of the price action at certain levels and the amount of the liquidity sitting there. And then uh, this is the trade feed widget for spot. And then actually we have some charts. So this is the main liquidity heat map. They've got the Delta and the MACD down here. Uh, lots and lots of things. So indicators you can add and remove. MACD, RSI, and a couple other ones. Indicators are displayed in the main chart. The EMA bands, the SMA bands, the heat map, the footprint. Uh, footprint, if you're familiar with exo charts, is very similar. Uh, the Delta bands here for you as well. The Delta chart. Delta is the difference between buying and selling power. Uh, volume Delta is calculated by taking the difference between the volume that's traded at offer price and the volume traded at bid price. If delta is greater than zero, then you have more buyers and sellers. So a live delta chart as well. Uh, liquidations, the so live liquidations in the market. Most of us are familiar with that by now. Uh, horizontal volume, which is very, very sharp. This would be similar to your VRVP, your visible range volume profile on your traditional trading view. Uh, but you can get a list of live uh, price action order sitting on the on the chart there and then footprints uh, this is a big one more advanced but footprints uh, are a type of candlestick chart that provides additional information such as trading volume and order flow in addition to price uh, this indicator allows you to see not only trading volumes but also liquidations on futures so this is showing you a lot of information in just one candlestick which is really really cool and the liquidity heat map itself, you can see all, wow, I'm not zoomed in very far. I apologize. Uh, we'll get you zoomed in here a little closer at these levels on the actual charts I have set up. Uh, but as you can see here, you have these heat bands 
uh, where all the orders are placed in the market, top and below of price action. Uh, you can filter this quantity uh, out by the quality filter, or excuse me, quantity filter to get just those heavy layers of liquidity you want to see price action potentially move to. And then uh, we have the, uh, this is actually clusters of footprints. So footprint charts are a type of candlestick pattern that provides additional information such as trade volume, uh, order flow, and price action. Did we just cover this one? Uh, with liquidity heat map, you may be uh, to determine whether the price level highlighted by the heat map will act as a price barrier and determine the absorption and exhaustion. So pretty cool there. And uh, all this is sitting right on your charts. And we're going to walk through how to actually get into them. There's also a screener here. I have not actually messed with the screener too much, but this tracks all large limit orders uh, inside the screener. Actually, data updates every 30 seconds, uh, which is very, very powerful. Um, I am looking forward to diving into this part of it a little bit longer and deeper. Uh, so I'm not going to cover a ton of the screener today. Uh, but if you guys want to see how this works on your own time, go ahead and hop in. And this is also able to shoot you uh, alerts right to your Telegram inbox, which is also pretty powerful within itself. But let's go ahead and get into our dashboard. So like they said, here's the quick workspace you can go ahead and run around in. Uh, excuse me, the default workspace. And then I have one set up for our live streams. Actually, two separate ones set up for our live streams. And then um, just my Bitcoin one here. Let's go ahead and see if we can get this to populate here quick. I'm going to turn off my ad block. And let's like to that load one more time. Let's get rid of this dashboard. There we go. So here we are taking a look at the actual chart and price action. This is a 15 minute time frame. If we zoom up here, I tend to use this on a much smaller scale. The one minute to the five minute while I know where the larger price action is or could be going. Uh, let's just take a peek here. So here we go on the five minute chart for Bitcoin. And if you simply hover your mouse over any of these levels, you can see the amount of Bitcoin in the millions actually waiting uh, in the order book, right? So I'm covering over here, here, as soon as we get up to that 39, or excuse me, that 33,900 level, there's about uh, 2.63 million dollars in sell order sitting there so that would be a little bit of resistance as you come up through this you got a 1.2 million a 1.27 million and you got a 4.3 million and all the way up here you have a 10 million dollar uh, sell wall potentially looking to take out some shorts or uh, some squeezes some late shorts in this area right here and potentially change price action around to the downside right uh, we keep a peek at these all day long. We are linking a lot of these in Discord throughout the day for you. And uh, as you saw earlier today, we came down and wicked right into this 33, uh, 350 area where there was $24 million in Bitcoin waiting to buy up that floor. And boy, did it just bounce. As soon as we hit that level, we wicked right back to the upside while reclaiming a little bit you know, of that liquidity wick speed. Uh, with a little bit slight move to the downside. And then you could see uh, a very strong wall start to set up below us here. You have this level came in. So we had one more level starting to form support. You have one more level now again starting to form support. You know, these just keep climbing up the charts here as people set more orders. And if I was waiting for a play today, which I was, I did not unfortunately get into it. I've been out of service range for most of my work week this week, which is unfortunate. Unfortunate, but we are looking for this 33, uh, 350, and it hit to the T. Um, if we hop over in Discord here, let's see if we can find that. Uh, yep. So we might fill this gap down to the 33.5. Uh, this is actually um, another member who was posting this chart here, but we did post this last night for you. And this level was just sitting here waiting, right? So we came down and tapped this level and potentially run this to the upside over the weekend. Uh, not hopping into some weekend trades, unfortunately, uh, as that just tends the lead to be liquidated uh, coming into Sunday afternoon. But Sunday night, we'll be looking at these more in depth, uh, trying to decide on a trading plan into New York Monday open. 
Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other tools on this. So down here, I do have the MACD and the RSI in the indicator here. So if you are taking a look at the 5, the 10, the 15 minute chart, and you're looking for confluence on hitting a lower support zone, obviously you're going to want to have your MACD down at the bottom and your RSI relatively low as well, potentially already setting up a divergence. So here at 1425, that divergence did hit. And let's see what happened to the upside here. So we tapped that first down here at 13, and then that divergence set in about 14.25. You can see it set in on the charts here uh, about five minutes after that with price action. So RSI was a leading indicator of a bounce here, and you had confirmation by touching a liquidity zone that was pretty thick on MOP charts here. Again, that $25.84 million zone. If you do scooch up to a higher time frame on these, those liquidity zones do get clustered closer together, and you could have been reading a much higher, maybe the 25 plus the 7 or it's 25 plus the 8 plus the 24, so maybe a $60 million uh, level right there in that $100 wick. And it just, it keeps going. This is just such ridden with beautiful tools here. If you go over to your indicators, uh, additionally to the charts, you can turn on the volume, uh, which would be showing up at the very, very bottom here. So here's your volume indicator turning on and off. See how that's working there. And then liquidations, you can put those on the main chart here and get a lot more information on liquidations cumulative delta is whoop, i keep zooming in it works a little bit different than trading view so you're zooming in zoom out they usually are typically used to on trading view work a little bit different and it just scales things like it's locked but here's your cumulative delta zone on the chart uh, MACD we do have turned on and I did not mess with any of these signals that's okay with me and the RSI we saw down there as well additionally on the main chart you can actually mess with much much more here as well so let's keep zooming in by accident let's just see if we can drag this out of the way here quick so the type of candlesticks you want obviously you want to turn those on you don't want those off and then the heat map you can actually change the color of the heat map there's some different level layers here if you're colorblind or if you just like one color better than the next uh, there's some blues and some purples, some reds and some oranges, and then the default, which you'd see on like book map. And then the footprint one is even more interesting. So I can get this zoomed right. So if we turn this indicator on, you're going to see a little bit of a change in how we see our levels on the chart. So you're getting uh, the delta mode turned on here. You're actually zooming in to each additional level. So the dead center one here, you, you would see... Uh, it's hard to point it out on the screen here because I'm not looking at it. But from left to right, the level you're looking at is going to be the far right. And then each additional, uh, this will be each additional candlestick back on the time frame uh, would view the change. So currently on the five minute chart, uh, this last candlestick uh, has about 5.97 million. Or excuse me, 2.47 million. The previous five minute was 2.49 million. The previous five minute candle before that was 2.63 million. So you can see we are chipping away at that buy wall at the current level. And if we just go to delta mode, you're going to see these candles. There we go. Uh, you're going to see a little bit more information come in here. You're going to see just chopping up and down. Come on now. It's so tough to make it see. Uh, our show liquidations are going to be in the bottom. Yep. Yeah. So you can see down at the bottom in the top, there was a $5.9 million liquidation versus the 1.9. Uh, I don't tend to bother to run these. And then I am running. Let me make sure I get these right here for you. There we go. I tend to run it on just the normal mode. The advanced mode zoomed in does not work real well on mobile. It uh, gets pretty convoluted on a smaller screen. I do like to run this on mobile. Uh, if you like that zoomed in information, it is there for you with the buys and sells. As you can see, there are a little bit of red and green bars there in the delta mode versus the liquidation potential behind it. And then um, the last one here should be the actual heat map itself. Yeah, this is the VRVP, the horizontal volume, and you can actually bend this out to be larger or smaller. I tend to make this as small as possible, uh, but if you do zoom it out, you can see a little bit more of the individual levels. And then I am running the Bollinger Band uh, with a 20 MA size on it, and that Bollinger Band, you know, tends to keep price action pretty contained. If you do break out, you tend to... Like, 
you know, you're pushing resistance. If you do break low, you're pushing support uh, on those Bollinger Bands, a pretty important indicator to have. And I'm not sure why I couldn't get these Delta candles to show up properly. Where is the... Yeah, the footprints aren't working. Some of these do come and go. Uh, maybe I'm not zoomed in enough. I think that might have been the issue here. So for the the delta mode to work, you have to be quite zoomed in. There it goes. Yeah, you have to be zoomed in a little closer. I was wondering why that looked a little funny as I was trying to explain it. But here you can see the delta mode, if it's a bullish or bearish candle, and how much information you do want with inside the candle there. So play with these at your discretion. Uh, I tend not to use the footprints. Um, I think they need a little bit more improvement until they're worth using over exocharts, but um, there is that information there if you zoom over it, right? So you can't tell by just by looking at it, uh, but you can see that full candle uh, on the zoom in, the buys versus sells. So 350 uh, versus six, 148 versus 13. Uh, 109 versus 109, so pretty equally sized candle there. But nonetheless, this is a super, super powerful tool. Let me get the delta off here. So footprints off. Uh, I just like using on the normal candles for right now. They are pumping out some updates for this, I think, pretty readily. Uh, I've not talked to them personally. That might be something we do in the future. Uh, and see if we can't bring you some kind of deal when they do launch a live subscription service. But I've got no idea when that's going to be. So uh, this could be free for a very long time. If it is, that'd be awesome. Uh, but go ahead to change charts. You're just going to want to click on it just like on TradingView. Pick your actual uh, exchange you want. Again, it's Binance Spot Futures, Bybit Spot Futures. Two very, very powerful exchanges that have the most volume in the world. And then you actually, you pick that and you just search up your ticker. So all kinds of tickers here to use makes life super, super easy. Uh, I'm not going to draw this out anymore, guys. This is Mob Charts in a nutshell. Uh, they have a Twitter page over here. Let's just take a quick look at it. Uh, I think they're painfully undervalued. Yeah, 139 followers, guys. This is a huge tool. Uh, go ahead and give them a follow over on, I'm not logged, I am logged into, I don't even follow them. Holy cow. Here was their August 24th update. Uh, on August 2nd, they did add the footprints. And uh, you can pull and add charts within your workspace readily. Okay, You don't have to wait um, or change charts around. You would just simply drag and drop things here. Get zoomed back out. So reset. I apologize for this getting a little smaller. So if you just grab the corners here, you can pull and drag and fit other things in here, just like a lot of the other liquidity indicators on the market, um, like Kingfisher and uh, trading different and add a whole bunch of other stuff up. Uh, so play with it over here. One more thing I do want to show you is actually creating these heat levels a little. So here, if I want to see this quality quantity filter, if I want to filter down to really just the levels and take the chop out of the market that I would actually trade, you know, I would just kind of bump this up a little bit. And you can see down here we had this. Oops. We had this larger $20 million level we've been talking about, $25 million level. It came down and hit that, started creating some divergences, and now we're moving to the upside. And if I had to guess, just based on liquidity heat map, you know, we're going to come back up to that 34,151 over the weekend here and potentially put it in a uh, lower highs off of that guy right there. Okay. Uh, what else do we want to show you? You can share screenshots, copy URL, tweet it directly out, copy the image to drop in your uh, Discord. Uh, you have built-in Fibonacci retracements, just like some of the regular trading view tools. Not all of them, um, but a, a fair, fair amount of them. Uh, some of the better ones, at least. Uh, I tend to keep the MACD on, the RSI on, and then sheet up the quantity indicator here to take some of the chop out of the market. But one of the most beautiful things about this is like exo charts, where you can see shorts starting to take over the market on the one minute chart. Uh, you can see it here too. I'm just going to see if I can find a quick example here for you. We're going to zoom in here on the one minute. And you can kind of see it right now, right? So we have this bar. It's trying to fight out of here. It's a two point. Whoop, it just broke it. Look at that. 
perfect for the video. So we had just shorts starting to pile on top here as we're venison breaking out, and then we just squeezed them all. And we're squeezing them all up. If we go right up to this level, so 33,900, so that's only about 25 more bucks up there, but that would be the level to hit. And then we had a couple higher up here, 4.5. And here's the big one up here, that 8.5, right? Um, but I want to show you a level where uh, you could tell it was time to short, right? If you're just scalping, so a one-minute time frame like this, and you can start to see the cell wall starting to form over the one-minute candle, you know it's it's starting to get that time, right? So we hit that, and then we had the sell wall. We come down here, we started having a buy wall, and then it pulled the buy wall. Liquidity got pulled. The orders got disappeared off the map, and uh, that was con some continuation to the downside, right? And uh, ultimately, we didn't come much down lower than that on the one minute, but that's just kind of the nutshell of how it works. Uh, let's see here, another example. So here was that original... Uh, slap up and as you can see it's starting to set in with a sell wall here and it just pushes price action down uh, you can actually see that in real time starting to come in to the market uh, we do have oh it's already zoomed down it, it's just it's the powers there man especially for a currently free tool you can't beat this uh, i found myself using this the last two weeks over and over and over again uh, you can see we came up and whipped right into this uh, 1.7 million dollar wall Wicked right up and got the liquidity. A little bit of a reversal here, but we'll probably catch some support here and keep heading to the upside. Uh, that is the natures of low, low liquidity weekends after a nice pump. All right, guys. Well, it's going to be about 20 minutes here on this video. I don't want to overdo it on you. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Don't forget to drop a like below. If you are not subscribed to the channel, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Set up the bell notifications, and we will catch you on the next one. Later, guys.